welcome back to BDI Resourcing's YouTube channel. My name's Alice and I help out on the anaesthetics and ICU desk here at BDI, helping anaesthetists and intensivists from overseas get jobs in the NHS. And today, what I would love to talk to you about is the current workforce climate for anaesthetists and ICU doctors in the NHS following COVID and specifically in 2022. During COVID, unfortunately, the amount of overseas recruitment that the NHS could actually do for any specialty, including anaesthetics and intensive care, was quite limited. Uh, there was a lack of jobs online, and I think this led to quite a big backlog of doctors looking for jobs. So at the end of last year, when NHS recruitment resumed and uh, NHS Trust were looking for more anaesthetists. To be totally honest with you, for every single job that there was, there was hundreds of applicants. So if you're one person looking for one particular job in one NHS Trust where there is only one vacancy, unfortunately the chances for you to actually secure that job were quite limited, no matter how experienced you were. And the likelihood is that against other doctors that had that previous NHS experience, maybe they'd been on the MTI uh, scheme previously, it was unfortunately unlikely that you were going to secure that job. That being said, there is a lot going on behind the scenes and with August rotations coming up in 2022 it means that I'm expecting, I think everyone is expecting at BDA, um, that the amount of positions available on NHS jobs, specifically as well at that middle grade level that's not been so available recently, is going to increase. Now the other day I was reading the Workforce Census which was published in February by the Royal College of Anaesthetists and in that census over around 20 pages it can be summarised in the fact that the NHS is currently working at a shortfall of anaesthetists. The NHS actually need 1,400 more anaesthetists to be at the level that they need to be at to be practising at full capacity and seeing the patients that they need to see. That's 1,400 anaesthetists that the NHS need. So whilst you might not see or have seen over the past few months lots and lots of positions being advertised, I honestly do expect that within the next couple of months we're going to see a huge increase, which is fantastic because it means that myself, I can work with many, many more of you and hopefully we can secure you some fantastic positions this year. One of the most common questions that I'm getting asked a lot and have been asked a lot over the past 12 months and honestly it's been quite difficult for me to answer accurately is well I'm looking for a specialty doctor post and I can't see any specialty doctor roles and to be totally honest with you this year alone I've been working with a lot more consultants and helping consultants secure fixed term consultant roles in the NHS than any other previous year that I've done this. Um, so why is that and is it going to change and the answer is Yes, it is changing. Um, middle grade roles are becoming more available. However, the title of specialty doctor, this is specifically what is changing, what I expect to see less and less of moving through the year and into next. Um, I was having a conversation the other day with a lead consultant at a fantastic NHS teaching trust the other day and he let me know that the reason he thinks that there are less specialty doctor jobs on the market in anaesthetics is because trusts are wanting to support doctors through CESA. They realise that international doctors, they're not wanting to restart their training and go through CCT. What they're wanting to do is create a portfolio for CESA application and specialist registration. Now in order to get your CESA, you need to have exposure to lots of different subspecialties in anaesthetics and that includes really niche areas like paediatrics, neurology and cardiac. Now with that in mind, in a specialty doctor contract with a fixed PA a week, you're not going to have the time nor can the trust support rotations with the trainees because as a specialty doctor you're simply there to support the trust, support the service of anaesthetics. So it means they're unable to really support you through that Caesar in the best way possible. So for a trust to get you through CESA, they're more likely going to need to offer you something like a fellow. Whether that's a senior clinical fellow, a junior clinical fellow, some trusts actually call them JSDs, which is junior specialty doctor and you would be either lower or higher. So it's not quite the specialty doctor name that you were used to and you saw a lot of 
previous years, um, but what it is, it's the equivalent. Um, so whilst I think that there is going to be a lot more middle grade roles available for people that are looking for that typical specialty doctor role, the one thing you need to look out for is actually, whilst the specialty doctor roles are decreasing on NHS jobs, things like senior clinical fellows, Caesar fellows, junior clinical fellows, ST3+, all of these roles are going to be better for you anyway, because they're going to be able to help you to support with your Caesar and specialist registration. So the workforce uh, in anaesthetics is changing massively, um, but I think it's only going to benefit people that are looking to go through Caesar, looking to progress with their career in anaesthetics, and looking to progress towards consultant. So what can I do for you? Well, my sole purpose at BDI Resourcing is to help anaesthetists and intensivists relocate to the UK and find jobs within the NHS. So if you have your GMC registration, whether that's through a postgraduate qualification, uh, it could be a Royal College qualification or a European diploma, or even if it's through previously having worked in the NHS on the MTI scheme or sponsorship, I can help you secure an NHS position in potentially a location of your choice. So how the process works is once you're happy with your CV and you've got your GMC registration, share your CV with me and I'll leave my contact details in the caption below. I will then review that for you and potentially then pick up the phone and have a lovely long conversation with you about your situation, what exactly you're looking for and how I can best support you. Once we've done that initial conversation, um, I will then begin having conversations with my contacts within the NHS and those tend to be managers and clinical directors in anaesthetics and ICU. That's across the country, across Scotland, Wales, South, London, Manchester, you name it. If you have a location preference, I can certainly work with that initially. Um, once we're at that stage and I've got an inkling of a potential position that might be suitable for you, we can explore that in more detail, including the accommodation options maybe, schooling, um, even just looking at subspecialty interests. I know a really big one at the moment that the NHS are looking for is actually chronic pain. Um, we can talk about that in more detail, get you booked in for some interviews, get you feeling really confident and ready for those interviews, and then hopefully getting you an offer and getting you here to the UK. Thank you so much for watching and if you're an anaesthetist or an intensivist I hope you found this slightly useful and positive. Like I say the workforce is changing dramatically, we've seen a huge rise in the need for consultants and going through the year I can imagine we're going to see a huge rise in middle grade roles and those sorts of roles are going to range from ST3 to clinical fellow. Um, and maybe potentially some specialty doctor roles as well. Um, if you are at all interested in relocating to the UK for the first time or even for the second time, please do send your CV to me. I'd love to take a look at it, even if it's just to advise you on what I think your next step should be. Thanks again. Bye.